Well, by now I'm sure that you've heard, but the House voted on the so-called bipartisan infrastructure bill before the Senate voted for reconciliation, which means that Build Back Better is probably dead. And you might think that that's just a little bit too presumptuous because we don't know and the president is still promising a vote on it. But I think that the writing is on the wall. Corporate Democrats like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, they don't care about Build Back Better. They don't care about the budget reconciliation bill. All they wanted was their corporate toll road bill. That's what their donors wanted. There's a reason why Republicans supported it as well. And so you gave them exactly what they wanted if you are a progressive in the House of Representatives. It was really important that these bills get linked together. Decoupling them was the worst thing ever. I mean, it shouldn't ever have been passed as two separate bills. But the second you waver and you say, all right, I'll vote on one without the other, that's when you lose all leverage. So if Build Back Better even passes at this point, which we don't know, then uh, Manchin can do anything he wants to it. Butcher it even further, and there's nothing you can do because you gave him what he wanted. Now, thankfully, not all progressives in the House caved. There were six individuals who voted against it. All of them are members of specifically the squad, and that includes Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, Jamal Bowman, Cori Bush, Rashida Tlaib, Ayanna Presley. They all voted no. But unfortunately, there weren't enough no votes to sink bipartisan infrastructure because other progressives supported it. All other progressives supported it, including Ro Khanna, Pramila Jayapal, Marie Newman, Mark Pocan, Katie Porter, and others. So now what I say is good luck getting what you want in Build Back Better because it's not looking great right now. Now, Joe Biden is promising a vote on Build Back Better before Thanksgiving. Uh, and now, uh, apparently, progressives are confident, the progressive leadership, they're confident that this is all going to happen because, uh, I kid you not, the moderate corporate Democrats in the House looked her in the eye and they sweared they're going to support it. Now, the problem is that Biden's entire uh, timeline of voting on this before Thanksgiving is shaky because there's a little bit of a caveat, right? So the moderate Democrats, or I shouldn't call them moderates, they're, they're corporate right-wing Democrats. They don't really have an ideology other than to deliver for their donors. But the corporate Democrats who supposedly looked Pramila Jayapal and other progressives in the eye and swear to support Build Back Better, um, they are waiting on a budget analysis to be conducted. Now, whether or not that will be finished before Thanksgiving, it looks really unlikely, but there's an out for them, even with their support. If the budget analysis yields results that they don't like, then they can they cannot vote for it. But apparently this is a win. So let me read to you what... CPC leader Pramila Jayapal said she got from them. As Politico reports, in a sign of how much trust has eroded, Congressional Progressive Caucus leader Pramila Jayapal asked each of the centrists who signed the statement to look her in the eye as they committed both publicly and privately to vote for the broader spending deal after they've seen cost estimates, according to multiple Democrats familiar with the exchange. So I have to laugh because this is ridiculous. They don't care. Their word is shit. They already broke their promise to you. They said they want to support both bills at the same time. This is what Biden said. He said, I'm not going to sign one without the other. And he's going to be signing one very soon without the other. So I just feel like you have to know that their word is shit, right? But yet, Pramila Jayapal thinks that this is, this is a good thing. Well, in their promise that they're making to you, I'm going to vote for it depending on the outcome of the independent budget analysis, they're already giving themselves an out. So when they inevitably look you in the eye again and they tell you to go fuck yourself, what are you going to do? You can't threaten to torpedo the bill that they wanted because you already voted for that. So wh what are you going to do? Sadly declare that they promised you and this is malarkey. I mean, they don't, they don't care. But yet, Pramila Jayapal, after this was passed, uh, claimed that they didn't cave after they literally just caved and went back on what they said they weren't going to do. Um, and and she, she, again, assured us that what they promised her by looking her in the eye, that was really, that, that meant something. We feel really proud of what we were able to get and how far we've come 
in just four weeks because we held the line over and over again. We also made the determination that um, the country needs to continue to move forward. And so we feel like we got the best of all worlds. We got a commitment on um, this vote, which, and, and every single one of those individuals looked us in the eyes and said they are voting for it. And so, um, you know, look, we gotta, we gotta, we, we gotta move things forward. Look, from a policy perspective, Pramila Jayapal is one of the best legislators. She sponsored the Medicare for All Act, which is phenomenal legislation. That being said, under her leadership, something like that would never, ever have a chance of passing because she very clearly doesn't know how to play hardball. I mean, to say, oh, well, you know, each of those corporate Democrats looked us in the eyes and we got the best of both worlds. I mean, it's just it, it comes off as extremely naive to me. And I don't think that progressives are ever going to have much leverage so long as she's the leader. But look, I could be proven wrong. And if she disproves me and Build Back Better gets passed and it doesn't get butchered further, great. I want to be proven wrong here. But I know how politics works. I know how sleazy and trifling these fucking corporate Democrats are. And the fact that she doesn't when she's inside, she knows how the sausage is made. It really makes me feel hopeless. Now, she may have gotten this pinky promise because each corporate Democrat looked her and every progressive in the eye and they said, we're going to vote for this so long as the budget analysis doesn't make us upset. But uh, there's nothing that she got from Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. They can still say, you know what, that $550 billion investment into climate, uh, cut it in half, cut it in more than half. What are you going to do? You, you can't say anything. So what's to stop them from butchering it even more because your corporate Democrat colleagues in the House might be making you this promise and you might trust them. But what's to stop corporate Democrats in the Senate from tanking everything because you voted for the bill that they wanted you to vote for? Well, uh, in an interview with Jen Uger of TYT, Ro Khanna answered this question before caving and voting for this bill. And as you're going to see, he admits there's not really anything that's going to stop Manchin from uh, from butchering it. But we do have something that's really great. It's gold uh, as a currency in D.C. And that is a promise to the president. We think we're not sure, but we think the, this is an important news point in, in the question here, because you're saying that Biden has some sort of implicit promise from Manchin and presumably cinema that they're going to right. vote for this version of the bill with 1.75. The framework, whatever that means. Um, and and Manchin is saying, no, I'm not giving any promises. So what's actually happening here? Does Biden have Manchin well, and Cinema's promise or doesn't he? I think publicly Manchin doesn't want to uh, make those commitments. But our belief is that the president has a private uh, c a commitment from 50 senators uh, that he could pass this and that he didn't come to us for many, many months. And he only came to the progressives once he had that commitment. I personally believe that he will pass the Build Back Better agenda, that Manchin ultimately will be a yes vote. But I acknowledge that they're the most popular provision in this was the Bernie Sanders increase uh, dental vision hearing and you know dental and, and vision are out. So I, I grant you that the bill has lost popular provisions that it should have. It should have a much more robust uh, prescription drug negotiation. It should tax the, the, the billionaires and the uh, corporations. It's not raising corporate tax rates because of uh, Senator Sinema. So I'm not, I'm not here to sort of sugarcoat things. What I'm saying is that we have a moderate president. We didn't win with Bernie Sanders or, or, or Elizabeth Warren. In light of that, he's adopted a lot of progressive policies like childcare, universal preschool, and most importantly, climate. And this is significant progress in light of the circumstances. Yeah, no. And that's where the disagreement is. Um, yeah, no, among not just us, but, but amongst people who have been critical of the of the caucus. So Representative Connell, we're not even talking about the disagreement. I, I think that what remains of the bill is, I think the negotiations went terribly. I agree. So basically what progressives got is a lot of promises by people who are liars, who represent nobody but their corporate donors. And now they gave away their leverage. There is nothing stopping Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema from completely destroying and dismantling what is left of Build Back Better. 
And the fact that we're still being told that this is a victory for progressives and that we got the best of all worlds, it's it's delusional. So I am incredibly disappointed in the progressives who caved, but for the progressives who stood their ground and did not cave, like AOC, they explain how now this is kind of an issue because if we pass the bipartisan infrastructure which we did and that signed into law but we don't get build back better then we're doing more harm than good overall so she explains this very eloquently in a thread on the issue of climate think of the bipartisan infrastructure as a lock and build back better as the key locks only open with keys biff climate benefits only unlock with bbb's provisions if we message biff as good on climate alone when it's not we stop the pressure for bbb's passage do not let this happen the desire to pass both together isn't the unnuanced stance some pundits think it is. Biff has a lot of bad stuff in it. That's how he got GOP votes. It also has a lot of good stuff in it. What you're hearing on TV. Passing BBB unlocks Biff's climate goals so the good prevails. If BBB isn't delivered with Biff's oil and gas locked in, we're in trouble. That is what makes it a huge gamble. So again, we need pressure to deliver the promise on BBB. For anyone middle-aged and younger, let's hope this ain't Kyoto all over again again because we're going to live with the outcome so she raises a really important point if biff passes but bbb fails ultimately we're worse than we were before and by passing the so-called bipartisan infrastructure bill, bill which is really just the corporate toll road bill well i mean all the pressure is gone what pressure what urgency is there to pass bbb because you just got a major win and you could sell this as a win if you're a corporate Democrat. And really, this uh, momentum is is gone for BBB because you're claiming it's a win. And there's an example as to how uh, Democrats are already doing this. So Biden uh, claimed on Twitter that uh, what this would do, what the bipartisan infrastructure bill would do, is it would allow every kid in this country to be able to turn on the tap and drink clean water. But AOC explains how this is factually in correct this bill is being oversold she writes the cost to replace every lead pipe in the united states is 45 to 60 billion biff only gives 15 billion without bbb many communities historically denied clean water will continue to be denied build back better has led money for disadvantaged communities we must keep pushing for build back better it's not just that we made these promises before look at how the infrastructure bill is being messaged now i respect the president and the legit feat he just accomplished but this is simply wrong we did not not fund the replacement of every child's pipe and we shouldn't tell people we did but they're doing it and now joe manchin can say look we just spent uh 1.5 trillion on infrastructure so why should we spend another 1.75 trillion on build back better it's just because progressives caved now they have no say they're completely legislatively irrelevant their input is not valued they caved six didn't though those members of the squad should be commended. But the other members, like Pramila Jayapal and Ro Khanna, who are part of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, who did cave, they need to reevaluate whether or not they're actually good at fighting for their priorities. Because you might support the correct policies, but strategically, if you're doing everything that is kind of working against you, then you need to reevaluate how you fight for things. Because what we saw overall from the Congressional Progressive Caucus was strength at first, but ultimately they they caved and the corporate wing of the democratic party banked on them caving and they were right to make that guess they were right to assume that they were going to cave because they did so i am uh, going to be watching closely to see what happens but i would not be surprised if build back better is not passed before thanksgiving and i wouldn't be surprised if it was watered down even further and mansion and cinema still don't support it this uh is is bad progressives look weak but the six individuals who are imperfect, they did the right thing now, and those members of the squad should be commended for that.